Hey Internet, just some retro gamer here. Well, I think I finally did it. I think I found the worst game I've ever played on PC. Maybe even ever, and I'm even including the CDI. This game's worse than Big Rigs on the PC, E.T. on the 2600, and, I don't know, Bubsy on the PlayStation. Though, that does admittedly sound pretty horrible. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Oh, he's got to be overreacting, right? Yeah, I'll let you decide that. Because today, we're going to take a look at a game called Akimbo Kung Fu Hero for Windows PCs. Akimbo Kung Fu Hero is an action platformer that was developed by Iridon Interactive and Chaos Works for Windows PCs and published by Global Star Software in 2001. The game itself makes use of pre-rendered graphics along with a CD-quality soundtrack. According to the game's cover, IGN PC describes the game as a game that's copped the best features from the last decade's entire crop of platforms. Translation? The best part about me is that I'm entirely unoriginal. Well, that's a low blow. But not entirely inaccurate. This is the story according to the manual. Akimbo, a renowned kung fu hero, discovers a letter in a bottle while taking a walk down a beach. Apparently an evil dragon named Fang has enslaved the inhabitants of Turtle Island. It is up to Akimbo to find the shaman and save the island from the dragon's influence. Jumping right into the game, we are taken to the first world, Caribbean Capers. Uh, stage one is called Turtle Flirt? Girl, you got one shell of a bunny. But I understand if you want to take things slow. As you can probably tell, the graphics are all pre-rendered. The backgrounds look pretty, to be honest, but Akimbo's model comes off as, uh, <laughs> pretty dated. And oh my god, are his jumps floaty. Hey, at least he knows Kung Fu. Whoa. Yeah, but the problem with that is he has so many frames of animation that it makes all his attacks feel super sluggish. Oh well, on the bright side, at least he doesn't need to connect with most of the enemies to actually hit them. Not that it helps a whole lot because I've been playing for about an hour now and I'm already completely lost in the first level. Okay game, where am I supposed to go? I can't jump across this pit, there's no way under it, and there's apparently no way over it. <sighs> now what? Well, the only thing that I can figure out is that it has something to do with this turtle that uh, <laughs> sounds like a horse and then runs off the cliff. After about 45 minutes, or longer, I really don't know, I kind of lost track of time, I figured out that you can apparently lift this turtle, uh, one-handedly. Man, Akimbo's pretty strong, huh? You take him with you, and then you use him to cross this bed of spikes. So, of course, the first thing I did was pick up the turtle and then head right for the nearest pit. I have a feeling that actually wasn't the right thing to do, now that I'm thinking back on it. Oh my god, what is that sound supposed to be? <laughs> it sounds like Akimbo was choking a chipmunk as he fell to his death. At any rate, I managed to cross the bed of spikes and became immediately lost again. And, as this game goes, this appears to be a running theme, as the levels themselves aren't as linear as they'd like you to think. It also doesn't help that you die in a single hit, not to mention that... Checkpoints are few and far between, and if you lose all your lives, you gotta start the whole level all over again. Oh, all things considered, I finally beat the first level of the first world. Finally, we're at least making some progress here. Let's move on to level two. Yeah, it's not a big deal. I can just go ahead and load up my save and... Seriously, game? You had to save my game with no lives? Yeah, when you beat a level, it saves your progress, along with how many lives you had remaining. Meaning that if you ended the last level with no lives, you have to one-shot the next stage or pick up another life along the way. 
even after reloading. And you can only hold a maximum of three lives unless you find a magic flask. And it doesn't help that this game is filled to the brim with cheap deaths. What the? Come on, I killed the bird! Oh, I get it, he dropped the fish. A freaking course it hit me, even though it hit the ground first. Fine, you know what? Fine, whatever. Let's just move on to the boss. This pile of rocks called Caliban. Okay, so uh, what do I do here to hit him? Uh, hit him in the glowing eyes? Am I, am I even doing any damage to him? Of course I'm not. Apparently, you're supposed to wait until he becomes vulnerable after throwing a bunch of rocks at you, and then kick him right in the stones. Uh. Seriously, this game gives you no clues, no hints, no indications, no uh, <laughs> glowy spots like in most games of this nature. Apparently, you just have to keep dodging his attacks until uh, he lets you hit him. Fine, whatever. He's dead now. It's time to move on to World 2, Forgotten Forest. Well, on a positive note, at least the game's giving us those throne-worthy puns we've come to expect on this show. And I have to say, while graphically this stage is quite pleasing to the eye, it's a bigger shit show than the last world. This world is even less linear if you can actually believe it. With these warping wells and all these hidden areas, it's seriously pretty difficult to know which way you're supposed to go. And of course, there's plenty more cheap deaths about, as the stage's foreground tends to hide enemies from view. Because, yeah, yeah, okay, that's totally fair. I should also mention, you're technically being timed this entire time, as you have a food meter that's constantly depleting. But that's going to be the least of your worries, because the game gives you plenty of food along the way, so you really don't have to worry about it too much. Speaking of things trying to kill you, the game's starting to give me camera whiplash. Seriously, it likes to whip around every time you turn or jump, and it makes seeing what's below you very, very difficult. Especially when you're trying to land on a moving platform. Seriously, this is just bad game design in my opinion. Well, since every stage looks pretty much the same, let's just skip right to this world's boss. This rhino that kind of looks like Rambi from Donkey Kong Country if he was made of Play-Doh. Actually, now that I think about it, that phrase pretty much describes this entire game. You got... Snakes that look like Radley from Donkey Kong Country 2. You got Discount Rambi over here. This whole game kind of comes off as a Kmart brand version of Donkey Kong Country. Anyway, rant over, back to the boss. This one is pretty easy. Just wait for the rhino to ram into the tree and give the old boy a Kung Fu style prostate exam. Rinse and repeat. Once you've defeated him, jump through the unlocked tree knot hole and make your way to the end of the- Oh, are you freaking serious right now? Oh, how I hate that. Why would you put a normal enemy after a boss like that? That's just... Oh, that's so frustrating. Anyway, after refighting the boss and not dying to the normal enemy thereafter, and yes, there was only one, so they know damn well what they were doing, we're up to World 3, The Lost Ruins. This stage introduces one of the more annoying enemies of the game. These, uh, humanoid, uh, humans? And that's because they take three hits to take down, and can jump up and off of other platforms when you least expect it. Luckily, you can sort these guys out with your scimitar. <laughs> you see what I did there? Sort them out? Hilarious. <laughs> I have a problem. This stage also introduces these swinging chains that, I'm gonna be honest, I'm just convinced they're broken. No matter how much I held left or right or alternated, I just couldn't get them to swing any more than just a little bit. But at least you can kinda glitch shimmy your way up the chain and find a way around it usually. There's also plenty of towers to scale and, um, cannons? And you know what? If I learned anything from playing Secret of Mana and, I guess, watching the Ringling Brothers Circus, Cannon travel is the most efficient form of travel. There's not much else to say really about these stages themselves, so let's move right on to World 3's boss, the Bone Templar. This flame-spewing skeleton has an axe to grind, and he's not afraid to show it. <laughs> Leap up and away to get him to swing his axe down, and then perform some of your sweet kung fu on him once he's stuck. And after three hits, he goes down and, uh, oh, guess what? There's no other enemies in this stage. You can go right to the end. Yeah, I'm going to be bitter about that for a while. Anyway, we're off to World 4, the mountainous region of, um, Misty Mountain. And it looks like all the flies have been swapped out for off-brand zingers now. But they go down just as easily. 
I have to say that this world is actually my favorite world in the game. The music itself is pretty catchy and the backgrounds here are visually pleasing, and the level layouts are pretty decent? Of course, with that being said, that's like saying I prefer one cat turd over another in this uh, litter box of a game. Yeah, despite it being my favorite stage, the game's overall mechanics really just detract from the experience entirely. Every time I was able to get into it, I would run into a weird bug like Kimbo not bouncing off these bees. Or getting stuck on this platform with uh, <laughs> literally no way out. Or these screen clearing bombs apparently having no effect on certain enemies, even though they put it like right next to it. Why would you do that? On top of that, all of these levels are just too freaking long. I mean, geez, it does me no good if I actually find myself a checkpoint, but I'm on my last life. Needless to say, this game's mechanics and controls just ugh, ruined any positive experiences I had. And speaking of experiences that were less than positive, Stage 4's boss is no exception. This stained glass creature attacks you by throwing these sword shards at you. And you'd think, well, there's all these bombs here, I should use them to probably defeat him. <laughs> but no, all they do is knock the creature down to buy you some time to kick your way through these barrels to get to the end of the stage and not kill the boss, even though you had to kill every other boss previously, but for some reason they change it. It's just, it's just so stupid. On the plus side, we've acquired our last piece of toilet paper from the local shaman, so now we're ready to fight Fang the Dragon. And of course, there's no indication as to what you're supposed to do. I mean, why would that change this whole time? So I tried everything I could think of. You hit him in the face, didn't do anything. You hit him in the snout, it didn't do anything. But when I hit him in the neck, he made this sound and he changed position, so I thought, oh hey, I must have found out what to do. Just come on, just die already. Oh come on, my food bar is almost empty. Am I am I even doing any damage to this thing? Apparently not, because apparently you're supposed to stab him in the stomach, then jump on his head, and then rinse and repeat. There's no flashing, no indication, there's no like obvious weak point, you know, like you do in like you see in most video games or I guess platformers in general. No flashing, just uh, hope you're doing some damage. What a big freaking waste of my time. But once you figure out how to defeat the beast, it's pretty easy. So, Fang goes down and what's our grand reward? <sighs> some crappy MS Paint fan art and a text scroll. Well, at least my disappointment is complete. And that was a Kimbo for Windows PCs. And you know what? I had a lot more fun just trying to get the setup program to work than actually playing the game. This is seriously one of the few times I bought a game at Goodwill and actually felt like I overpaid for it. I mean, I'll be honest, it lured me in with its really neat looking cover art and I thought that was pretty cool. And then it sucker punched me with pre-rendered graphics and poor game mechanics. This game is literally why the phrase don't judge a book by its cover exists. Graphically, the background art is very well done but it comes off as a bit too busy for this style of game, and at times it really doesn't mesh well with the sprites. And speaking of the sprites themselves, they're... they're just not very good. And to be honest, some of them kind of look like default game assets from whatever creation kit was used here. Also, don't use foreground objects to hide enemies. That's bad design. Probably tell them a little bitter about that. Musically, this has a pretty decent soundtrack. It's just a shame that it's actually tied to this game. The sound effects are questionable. The chipmunkish screams when you fall off screen or bounce on certain objects is severely out of place. And I'm pretty sure I heard some of these sound effects in other games before, like Rayman. As far as how well this game controls, it's just awful. If you hit the attack button and switch to the jump button too quickly on the joystick, he just keeps attacking until he decides to stop. And I couldn't tell you how many times I wanted to hit an enemy and run away, but Instead, the game would make a Kimbo backflip. Also, he's just too floaty and has way too many frames of animation. This is probably the worst Windows PC game I've had the displeasure of playing. Most of the issues I had playing this game were either due to buggy game mechanics like the swings not working properly, I had a key get stuck in a wall during one of the tower levels, and overall just has poor collision detection. And when those things weren't happening, Akimbo was just not fun to control with his floaty jumps and awkward looking attacks. Akimbo gets my retro rating of 3 out of 10. This is some kung fu fighting where the kicks were definitely not fast as lightning. As of this video, you can actually pick this game up from my trash can when the trash goes out on Tuesday. Now that's not too shabby.
or if you're like me, you can probably pick it up at your local Goodwill for $3. And man, did I overpay. Of course, if you're looking to get your copy, you know, on the internet, you could probably find yourself a copy on eBay for $5 to $10, disc only, shipped. Or if you're a complete crazy person, you can actually pick this game up full big box package for around $30 on eBay. This game also offers a completion factor where if you find all the game's secrets, you can 100% your file, but no thanks. I'm not touching this game anymore. I, I think I've had enough. Thank you. Now, I know it seems like I'm being really hard on this game, and some people might be thinking, well, if you could do better, why don't you make your own game? Well, the hard truth is I can't do better, which is why I didn't make a game. But my god, this game was just completely unpleasant from start to finish. There was a time where I thought I was having fun playing it, but now that I think about it now, I think I just had gas. If you like Akimbo's aesthetic but want to play a good platformer, then check out Donkey Kong Country on the Super NES. Now that game is definitely not too shabby. And that's all for this week's Retro Game Showcase. Do the YouTube thing of uh, liking, subscribing, commenting down below. Share out my videos. I really do appreciate it when people do that. And speaking of things that I appreciate, I super appreciate my Retreon crew. You guys are so awesome. Thank you again for your support. I sincerely couldn't be doing what I'm doing without the support of you guys. You guys are amazing. Thank you. I don't have any other words, but you rock. And on that note, that's all from me. I'm just some retro gamer. Keep on gaming. Till next time.